They make big bets on nuclear energy. Um, I appreciate that both of them have their eyes up and are really looking to the horizon and certainly have had their feet on the ground in terms of implementing and deploying nuclear energy. So, it is critical for us uh, to be able to thank, really, the American Nuclear Society for inviting me and all of you in the audience for your expertise and your vision and, above all, your perseverance, as has been said, to get us to where we are today. The road certainly has not been easy, but thanks to the, the commitment, really, of the people in this room, we're looking at a chance, a chance to build new nuclear at a scale not seen since the 70s and 80s. So this morning, I want to talk for just a minute about the challenges we face and the opportunities that we face. And I hope that you'll come away from our discussion here this morning feeling the weight of this moment that we are in, feeling the urgency to seize it before it passes, because it is not a given that this build out of nuclear is going to happen. I hope you'll feel empowered to take on this new era, and I hope we'll all feel empowered to do it together, as Jeff was just saying. So, when I took office, I, I could not have imagined that in less than four years, the prospects for nuclear energy would be what they are right now. The nuclear energy industry was, uh, you know, teetering on the edge again. Nearly half of our reactors were at risk of being shut down. For industry, the costs and the first mover risks were insurmountable. You needed authorities and incentives that the federal government at that moment wasn't willing to provide. And then enter President Biden. Honestly, he came into office determined to change the economics of clean energy. He enacted an industrial strategy to make American businesses competitive again in the industries that are going to shape the future, like clean energy and semiconductors. So the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Chips and Science Act made these historic and are making these historic investments in clean energy, of course, including nuclear. The Biden administration's agenda placed special emphasis on scaling up nuclear power to meet the growing demand for clean, reliable power and to achieve this net zero emissions economy. The, the big, hairy, audacious goal is to reach a 100% clean electricity grid by 2035 and net zero by 2050. That means, essentially, we have to add, as a nation, 2,000 gigawatts of clean power to the grid by 2050 to meet those goals. So our goal with respect to nuclear is to triple the amount of nuclear by 2050. And in order to get there, we established a zero emission nuclear productions tax credit valued at more than $30 billion. By shifting the economics of keeping reactors online, this credit has helped to stave off the premature closure for basically half of our reactor fleet. And that is a huge victory, right? Do no harm, keep what we've got. And then the administration also put up two and a half billion dollars for advanced reactor demonstrations. And then Department of Energy's Loan Programs Office recommitted to making big uh, nuclear energy projects possible, delivering hundreds of billions of dollars in Title 17 loan guarantees. I should say hundreds of billions of dollars in loan guarantees from our Loan Programs Office. And in just the past few months, Congress has approved another $2.72 billion to support the expansion and, uh, of domestic enrichment and conversion, and another billion dollars to support Gen 3 Plus demonstration, supply chain, university programs. So, collectively, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, and the 2024 Appropriations Act 
have provided over $10 billion in direct funding, tens of billions of dollars in clean energy tax credits, and hundreds of billions of dollars in low interest loans for nuclear projects. People, <laughs> this is unprecedented and it's irresistible. And one more thing, <laughs> we've taken the first steps to sever our reliance on Russian fuel by implementing a ban on Russian uranium imports and investing billions of dollars in onshoring the nuclear fuel supply chain. All of this adds up to this historic chance to launch a new beginning for nuclear energy. And we feel the winds are starting to blow in the right direction. If you look at the facts, the largest producer of electricity in the United States is now a nuclear plant. I'm referring, of course, as Chris was just saying, to the Vogel power plant. And as he mentioned, um, I think there were a number of people in this room who were also there to celebrate uh, the startup of Reactor 4. And, and that, of course, was a celebration of the reactor itself, but it was also a broader milestone because we've now moved past the first mover problem. We're also on the path to reopen a shuttered plant, as, uh, as John was just saying, the Palisades uh, facility in the, my home state. Um, $1.5 billion conditional commitment from our loan programs office. And, you know, we've kept Diablo Canyon open, right? So nuclear energy, uh, as you know, makes up 20% of our domestic electricity uh, generation, about just shy of that, and about half of the clean energy mix. I'm so happy to see, as I'm sure you all are, that nuclear energy enjoy, enjoys right now the largest share of public support in decades. 57% of Americans saying that they support more nuclear power plants to generate electricity. And then, you've just heard uh, in the previous panel, I think, that there is a demand signal uh, for nuclear coming from some of the world's biggest companies, driven in part uh, by, first of all, the manufacturing boom that has been generated by the Inflation Reduction Act, all of these facilities coming online to make all kinds of clean energy products like batteries for electric vehicles or electric vehicle assembly plants or solar or wind, etc. All of those factories, of course, create demand. And then, of course, there is the projected growth in firm electricity needs of AI and data centers, which isn't going away anytime soon. So in March of this year, I convened a number of nuclear utilities alongside uh, you know, a number of potential industrial and data center customers, the hyperscalers, who were interested in clean, firm power. And the message was loud and clear. They want new nuclear, and they want it now. That's great. Discussions like that are beginning to bear fruit. Earlier this month, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Nucor announced agreements with Duke uh, Energy to explore new clean energy options, including nuclear. Um, but the Biden administration is not finished. I'm thrilled to let you know about another step in our unprecedented federal support to the nuclear power industry, because today, the Department of Energy is establishing a new program to support the deployment of advanced light water gen 3 plus small module reactors. So this uh, novel program really will provide up to $800 million for one or two initial deployments and $100 million to support the nuclear supply chain and siting efforts uh, across the country. It's specifically designed to incentivize coalitions coalitions of nuclear vendors and utilities and off-takers, not just to build the first of a kind, but to immediately set a path for that nth of a kind. So the federal government's renewed commitment is coming to you in the form of uh, R&D and licensing support and financing 
and all the other stuff I mentioned, tax incentives, supply chain assistance, technical assistance on rate structures, convening. There's also the Advance Act, which is looking to modify regulations at the NRC to make it more streamlined. All of that is happening. We're bringing everything. We're all in to the table to make it feasible for nuclear to respond to this massive and growing demand for clean power. So let's find ways to team up, to share risk, to look for innovative ways to finance construction, make use of existing resources like retired plants, skilled workforces, existing nuclear plants that are still going, but who may be licensed for more reactors and haven't built them yet. And there are a lot of those sites. Uh, if you're worried about your PUC, I'll call your governor. I'll call your congressional delegation. We'll get everybody in a room. We'll find a way to structure a deal that works. So here's the hard ask. Who here is going to announce plans to break ground on the next AP 1000? This is a group that knows how to persevere against the odds, to innovate your way out of wicked problems, build the big things that nobody thought possible. That's what you do. And that's what we know you can do again. I want to state in no uncertain terms, the incentives on the table right now are unprecedented. The demand signal is there. It is time to put indecision in the rear view mirror. The choice is yours to make. I mentioned at the beginning that we face this enormous challenge and an enormous opportunity. Well, fortune has always favored those who treat those two as one and the same. So let's shape this moment in history together. Thank you.